Hi there, my name is Carlos. I'm the manager of online programming and community development at Gender Spectrum. Uh, I have some amazing young people here with me, uh, all members of the Gender Spectrum Youth Council. Do you folks want to go around and uh, introduce yourselves? Hi everyone, I'm Arielle. I'm 15 years old. I use she, her pronouns and I am a transgender woman. Hello, I am Emily. I am 14. My pronouns are she, her, they, them. Hi. Hi everyone, my name is Zana. I'm 16 years old. I'm non-binary and I use the pronouns they and them. Hi, my name is Sean. I'm 13 years old and I'm a transgender boy and I use pronouns he, him. Awesome. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, if I failed to mention, I use he, him pronouns. Um, okay, so the name of the program is Challenging Moments in Conversation, How to Avoid Awkward Situations. Um, we wanted to do this program because I think a lot of people are, um, have good intentions and are well-meaning in wanting to get to know a person. Uh, maybe it's someone new in their life. Maybe it's an old friend. Maybe it's a family member, a relative. Um, but sometimes in getting to know someone, you ask inappropriate or offensive questions without even knowing it. So what we've done is we've kind of pinpointed some questions that we think are worth discussing. In no way is this a prescription kind of be all end all of um, questions that you should never ask and um, prescribed responses to questions um, if someone chooses to respond. This is just us having a conversation about um, our experiences um, asking these questions or being asked these questions. Um, we're going to have four minutes to discuss each question. Uh, that'll be the first half of this program. The second half of the program is going to uh, I'm going to open it up to our youth council members to kind of just talk about their lived experiences um, in their own lives and how some of these things come up and how they navigate through it, um, all of that. So we're going to jump in. We've got four minutes, remember, to discuss each question. And the first question, are you all ready? Awesome. Okay. The first question is, are you going to have surgery? I'll let you all start. <laughs> so, what do you think of it? <laughs> I think this can be a uncomfortable question for several people. However, personally, I don't think it is. Okay. Because some people may be interested if you're ever going to have surgery, and that's okay, uh, in my opinion. However, what might not be okay is they use it to their advantage in several different ways. Um, yeah, that's my opinion. Does anyone feel any differently or agree? Like, how do you all feel about being asked, are you gonna have surgery? I agree definitely to some extent on that. Um, I personally, if somebody asked that question, I wouldn't mind um, because I would recognize that they weren't trying to do any harm. But um, it's definitely um, a little bit of an, an uncomfortable question um, because when somebody asks you that, it's just something that's very personal to me, surgery. It's just something that um, is very, yeah, it's just really personal and it almost feels like they're violating your personal space. Um, and also it's, um, it's my decision and I don't think that it should concern anybody else. But if somebody asked me the question, I would definitely be open to talking about it. But I think that people should recognize that not all trans people are comfortable with talking about those kinds of um, situations. Great, thank you, Ariel. Okay, well, moving on to the next one. Shani, do you wanna say uh, something? Well, for me, I find personally, uh, I'm not comfortable answering this question because unless this person is my doctor, I don't think it's really any of their business what mm -hmm. my private parts are. And it's, they wouldn't ask a cisgender person about their private parts. So I don't think it should be any different for a transgender person. So I don't think you should ask this question. Okay, great. Thank you. Okay, we're going to move on to the next question, unless anyone has anything else they want to add to it. All right. 
Great, let's move on. Okay, the next question is, are you sure you're transgender? Um, for this <laughs> question? Oh, do you want to go first? You go ahead. For this question, um, I feel pretty strongly about it just because I feel like, at least for me personally, it took a lot of kind of self-discovering and a lot of like, I guess, soul searching before I found out that I identified as non-binary. And for me, I'm really shy and like introverted. So I feel like if I have taken the time and courage to come out to you, I feel that I trust you and I want you to support me. And if that's your response, I feel kind of like let down or, you know, disappointed or I feel like you don't support me. So I would be really careful about asking these questions to trans people because it can come off as being really hurtful even if that's not your intent. I agree. Um, it could be perceived as a very hurtful comment or a question and uh, it's I personally have spent many uh, hours searching up researching how this might be who I am and I'm sure that's true for many others and I think I think this is a very uncomfortable question for other people as some people might perceive it as oh you might not be trans enough or something along the lines of yeah, I find this question so offensive on so many levels. Like when um, Carlos first said that question, I almost like, like it just makes me like coil up in like anger almost and like disgust because that question um, violates per um, me personally on so many levels. Um, like I grew up knowing that I was transgender and knowing that I was a girl inside and out. And um, I think that when people ask um, a question like that, it just sounds really insensitive. And yes, I'm sure I felt it since when I was a toddler, since I could speak, I've always wanted to um, try on princess dresses and I've always expressed myself in a feminine way. So um, it's really frustrating when people say, are you sure you're transgender? Because uh, yes, I'm sure. And I've gone on um, hormone blockers and I've been on estrogen for two years now. So I just think that it's a really, we, uh, us as a community, a transgender community, we really need to put out there that this question is not okay. And also for people who have discovered themselves later on or have come out to their families later, they have, have they probably did a monumental amount of research and it took a monumental amount of courage to come out to their families. Um, and I think that it's, yeah, it's really disappointing because um, you worked so hard to get where you are and it almost feels like um, people are degrading you because um, by asking this question. Well, like my fellow council members, I definitely think this question is very insulting because for trans people, from the minute you start thinking, could I be trans, to when you come out, it's a very difficult process. And from the minute I started thinking, wait, I don't feel like a girl, I feel like a boy, am I trans, when I was in like third grade to when I came out at the end of fifth grade, it's really hard to have people saying, after all that work of transitioning and figuring out who I am to people saying, are you sure this is who you are? Because when you've been battling with something for that long, it's like, yes, I know this is who I am. I know who I am. And especially, you know, when you're, if you're like me and you're a trans person who maybe defies some gender norms, like if you're a boy who wears nail polish or dresses or something and having people say, hey, maybe you're not trans. Maybe you're just gay or something like that, that really hurts because whether or not I do feminine things or wear feminine clothing, I definitely know I identify as male. And having you say, are you sure you're trans? It's like saying your identity is not valid. 
and I don't think that's okay. And I think this also, this doesn't just apply to um, male to female transgender people or female to male. It also applies to non-binary people as well. And I think it especially, um, it, it especially correlates with them because um, I don't want to speak for anyone else because I personally do not identify as non-binary but um when you're saying are you sure you're transgender it's almost like you're questioning their outward expression so um if someone is uh uh expressing themselves in a feminine or a masculine way and you're questioning that it's almost like questioning their identity and judging who they are oh that's great thank you um Okay, we're going to go on to the next question then, unless anyone has anything else to add to that. Okay. Um, what's your real name? I believe it's no one's business to know my legal or birth name. Uh, it could be, to me, this is just something I'm not comfortable with saying. Uh, it it makes me angry to think of my original name and to think that people will want to know about it rather than just accepting my current name. And also there are so many things wrong with this question, especially your, what's your real name? Well, my real name is the name that I chose for myself, which is Ariel. And my real name is definitely not my birth name. Um, I personally am okay with just closing my birth name, but a lot of trans people aren't. And it's just, yeah, it's just offensive on so many levels. And it's also, again, kind of questioning whether their identity and, um, and I personally think everyone's identity is valid and it shouldn't be questioned. And there's a boundary that um, everyone has. And when you cross that boundary, it's just not okay. And I feel like this definitely crosses it. Even if someone is willing or um, okay to disclose their birth name, it's just not right. So, and especially the way it's phrased, I think is just really important to discuss. I definitely think this question is very offensive. Um, for one thing, the use of the word real, saying it's your real name. My real name is Sean. The name I was given at birth is completely irrelevant. That's a time in my life where I was, I mean, I had to be someone I wasn't, and that represents a person who I never was. And I find it, I mean, it's a lot of hard memories, and to think that some people still call me by that name, and it's just completely wrong to say what's your real name because my real name is the name that represents who I am. And, and especially when you ask someone this question or try to pressure them into saying like, oh, we won't tell anyone. Like, okay, it's fine, but why do you need to know? This is not something that's important. It has nothing to do with who I am today. And if you think that what really matters is the name that's on my birth certificate, then I don't think you're really a friend or an ally or someone who really cares about my feelings because that name does not represent who I am. It does not represent the person I am. The name that does is the name that you call me by. Yeah, I've personally never been asked this question before, but since I have other trans friends, they often like are mutual friends who they're out to will come up to me and be like, oh, what's so-and-so's like real name? Like, what's their birth name? And it really angers me because it's like, you know, it's none of my business what their name is. So, you know, like, why would I know? And if they confided in me to tell me what their birth name was, why it's none of, it's not my place to tell anyone else that. And it's all 100% that person's business. And I just feel like that question is a super intrusive question. And, you know, it just doesn't, it's really not your place to know that yeah thank you for that okay all right we're gonna go on to the next question then um this one has to do with the 
first question that we talked about with surgery. Um, and this is, do you still have A and then followed by body part? It can be insert whatever genitalia body part um, would, would follow with that. Um, how do you feel about that? I think this kind of falls in line with the question before this. Uh, it shouldn't be your business. Um, and it's completely up to me whether I want to get surgery or not and change how I look. Well, well just, oh, sorry. You can well, like the first question, this one is completely offensive and completely irrelevant because whether or not I still have a certain body part, it shouldn't matter to you. It shouldn't change your perspective of me. I mean, it's a part of me that you don't see, so why should it matter to you? If I say I'm a boy, does it really matter what's below the waist, really? Like, it matters that I say I'm a boy, I know I'm a boy, and I don't think what's under my clothes is relevant at all. Yeah, and also it just, it's just so personal, and it feels, um, I, I, when I, I have been asked this question before, and I felt violated, and I felt, um, yeah, I just felt like I wasn't being respected at all whatsoever and also it shows um a whole level of ignorance um basically saying so since i identify as female people automatically assume that i have female parts and i think that's a big thing ingrained in um modern society that people um just like associate gender with genitalia and um i think that really needs to be separated because um people um Everyone is different anatomically, and um, it should not correlate with their gender. And um, I think that is really important to educate people on because, um, yeah, we, we can't have these questions being asked because it's offensive and it hurts. It really does. So. Yeah, I feel as if a lot of people think that you're like, genitalia like defines who you are like if you're trans and you come out as like a trans male or a trans female a lot of people think oh well you have to have like breasts if you want to be like a trans female or you have to have a yeah if you want to identify as a trans male I'm like that's not the case and that's not true at all you know and for me being non-binary a lot of people when I've come out to them have automatically assumed like I'm like a trans boy for whatever reason and they're always like so you just don't want to be a girl anymore and you're just like you want to be a boy and you're not going to like be feminine or anything like that and I feel like it just stuff like that just doesn't define your gender to me like you define your gender and your gender can be whatever you want. I would just like to say one more thing about what Ariel was saying about feeling violated it's like for trans males when people ask them questions like, do you still have breasts? And you can tell that they're looking at that part of your body. It's just completely inappropriate. And the fact that someone is trans doesn't give you the right to know everything private about them. I've been asked this question, and it personally made me feel a bit unsafe. And I think that's a huge part in when you're trying to support someone. And... uh there's a very fine line between sex and gender, and a lot of people don't know this, but it's important for you to know. And also, I think that the root of a lot of these ignorant questions is um, a lot of like assumption. Um, when they're asking their que this question, they're just assuming that it's going to be okay. And they're also associating gender with things that it shouldn't correlate with. And I feel like gender is just associated with so many things that it shouldn't be. I think that in society, gender um, and sexuality are definitely, the lines are blurred and they shouldn't be. I think gender just stands alone as it is. And um, it's more of an abstract thing. And gender isn't just a binary. And um, so, yeah, I think, I think um, that's what I think. And I think that um, this, these kind of ignorant questions, assumption is definitely the root of it. What Emily was saying about feeling unsafe when people ask these kind of questions, like what reason could someone have for wanting to know what private parts I have? And I just think that 
It makes you feel unsafe and makes you feel violated. And I just don't think you should ask that kind of question. Yeah, and if I can add to that, there's this idea that, um, you know, gender and sex are completely separate. You know, we've kind of talked about, like, there there is some overlap and there is some, um, again, yeah, overlap between gender, sex, and sexuality. Like, they are separate in many ways, but they're not completely autonomous from one another. Um, so the idea that, like, you, you know, if you are this, you have to have this, um, it, it isn't true. You know, I, and again, like, you're all are saying it. it doesn't matter what art someone has. It's none of your business. Um, okay, the next question we're going to jump into is using they, them uh, as a pronoun is incorrect and it doesn't make sense. I've probably been told this like 10 million times. Like, <laughs> it's like, it really gets on my nerves because I, for one, I'm not good at grammar at all. And I like when people told me this, I never really understood like the whole like they them as a pronoun is isn't like grammatically correct because it's like it is when you're talking about like someone you would still say like they are going to the store like you wouldn't you use like double negatives and things like that. So I don't understand like when people say that it just doesn't make sense and really how I interpret when someone says that to me, it shows that they are not willing to put in the effort and my like pronoun and like me as a person doesn't matter to them anymore. And like grammar is more important to them, than, like me and like our friendship and like me as like a human. And I just feel like if you, if someone tells you their pronouns, like at least for me, when I tell people their pronouns, when, when I tell my people my pronouns, I'm really shy about it. And when I confide in you something like that, I trust you and I want you to support me. So when you tell me something like that, it's like kind of like a diss and it's like make, well, it's like kind of like an insult, honestly. Hi. Go ahead. Um, and I also feel like a lot of people use that. They kind of mask their, their, um, discrimination. Um, with it. Um, and I feel like that happens in a lot of situations. But if people say, oh, it's not grammatically correct, I feel like they're just, they're just not accepting and they're not open of the, of that fact. And so they kind of just use grammar as their savior because they don't want to be perceived as closed minded. I agree with it being, uh, seen as, kind of not being accepting or putting in the effort. Uh, however, I can admit that it does get, it does take some time to get used to calling people they or them. But once you get the hang of it, it makes perfect sense to you. And when you use it like they went to a store, it makes a lot of sense. But also, it takes a while to adjust to anything. Like, my family had, um, like, a hard time adjusting to when I first transitioned, and they had to call me um, a different name and use different pronouns. And I think it's um, it might be a little bit hard because of grammar, but I really don't think that's an issue. I think that um, it's hard in any situation. Um, so I think that people just need to kind of suck it up and adjust. <laughs> I mean, I've had a lot of arguments with my language arts teachers over this because while I personally don't use they, them pronouns, I know a lot of people who do, and I find it very insulting when people use grammar as an excuse because the word you used to only be plural and thou was singular, but now thou is obsolete and people use you for either one. The English language changes and in reality, people used they, you know, informally for a long time, you know, if you don't know someone's gender, or if you, you're saying someone left their jacket on the floor, people use it all the time. And I think the problem of people using grammar as an excuse is like many of those people don't use grammar like properly 100% in their lifetime. Like, do you know people who have never made a grammar mistake, even language arts teachers? It's no excuse to say, oh, but it's grammatically incorrect to say they are walking their dog or something. But really, the fact is, it's validating someone's gender to say that, and while it may take time to adjust, 
any time you have to call someone by a pronoun different than what you were originally calling them, it takes time to adjust. So I think that really this is no different, and if someone uses they, them pronouns, then that's what you should call them. You shouldn't call them a pronoun that they don't agree with just because you think it's grammatically incorrect. Yeah, like, a lot of people, like, I'm always constantly being misgendered, but there's always those group of people, like, in my friends or, like, people who I work with or, like, family, and whenever they use the right pronouns, like, it automatically like brightens my day and automatically makes me feel like so much better about myself and I can guarantee you that probably almost every other trans person if you use the correct pronoun with them like it will make them really happy so it's really important if you have like trans people in your life to use the correct pronoun and make that effort and not make excuses yeah go ahead Sean well well people might not currently see they as an appropriate pronoun, I think we have to keep fighting and say, yes, this is an okay pronoun to use, even if it means flunking grammar tests, which is what I do. Uh, if it shows people that you're refusing to see they as only a plural pronoun, then it's opening that person's mind. And also, if you look at it on like a technical perspective, if you look at linguistics and languages, um, languages are meant to be evolved. And that's my perspective on it. Like, it's meant to be changed. Like, things are meant to be challenged. And I think that this could definitely be like a movement in the future and really just like opening people's minds to they, their pronouns. Like, why is it that people are willing to accept all these new words like emoji, but they're not willing to accept that a pronoun they? can be used as singular. We add all these new words to our dictionary every year. Just accept that this pronoun can be singular and move on. It's not that big a deal. <laughs> and that's exactly what we're doing, is we're going to move on to the next question. <laughs> um, okay, so the next question is has to do with sexuality, uh, the difference between sexuality and gender. Um, and it is, um, so you're gay, or so you're just a lesbian. Well, um, during my transition, um, like pre-transition, I was, um, I was, I still, uh, was being called by like he, him pronouns. And like, I, I had, um, I was just known in my school as male, but I definitely presented in like a feminine way. Like I had, I like, I grew out my hair longer and I acted, you know, kind of like how people say like the stereotypical, like gay boy who's like really like flamboyant and girly um and i would be i was called terrible names i was called a homo and a faggot and um i was just like i experienced like a lot of bullying um and yeah i just realized that like people um totally just like associate gender and outward expression with sexuality which i think is totally wrong and yes carlos like you were saying like um uh sexuality and gender definitely like rhyme with each other and they definitely like have a lot of similarities and like connections but in a way they're also like totally different because like if I express um myself in a certain way like you sh no one should assume anything about it um especially like if I wear something and people just like make an assumption about me or my personal life or my sexuality I just think that it's just wrong on so many levels again I think some people need to learn the difference between our terms and actually make the effort to do so uh, sexuality rather really important to people's lives can be completely different to their gender. Now, it can be mixed together, and it's a very complicated topic, uh, and I think that gender and sexualities are different, and you should assume someone's sexuality due to their gender or sex. Right. So, yeah, there's this idea that, like, if someone is trans and they're gay, right, the, the next question kind of segues into that is, like, why don't you just pick one? Why do you have to be trans and gay? Or, wait, so what does that make you then? Well, I think this one definitely applies to me. Um, 
since I'm trans and I also identify as bisexual, if I have crushes on boys and people say, wait, why can't you just be a straight girl since you're like, you're a trans boy and you have a crush on boy, like, why do you have to be a trans boy? Um, I think people sometimes don't see that I'm not straight, I'm, you know, if I have a crush on a boy, then that's a gay crush, not a straight crush, because I am a boy as well, and, you know, gender and sexuality are not related, like, me, I identify as male, and, um, just because I was biologically female, and biologically female, does not mean that, um, if I have a crush on a boy, then, that I'm straight, because it's what I identify as, and it's not that I can't just be one of them, because they're two different parts of my identity. Yeah, like, for me, being non-binary, you know, after I explain it to people, people are usually pretty accepting, but most of the time, I just kind of say that, like, I'm gay, even though I identify as, like, pansexual, but I'm always just like, yeah, like, I'm so gay, like, super gay, but um, when I say that, like, sometimes people are like, but that doesn't make sense, because you're non-binary, and it's like, you don't have a gender, you don't identify anything, so I'm just, like, so confused. And, like, that's fine. Like, for me, I just, for me, it's like, um, when I, I don't really have, like, a good answer for when people ask me that question. I'm just like, that's just the way it is, dude. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so, like how everyone else is saying, just don't assume things about people. And people can pretty much identify however they want it you always have to remember it's that person's choice and it's that person's like life and it's that person's you know like business and they can do whatever with their life and they can live however they want as long as they're happy you know yeah exactly um sometimes the the answer to question is yep that's that's it <laughs> like you said like that's that, that's just what it is Sorry, or not. Um, okay, so we've got two two more questions. Um, I think they kind of have uh, to do a lot with each other. And um, those questions are, I had no idea you were trans. Why didn't you tell me? I think uh, this might not be the most rude of a question, but it, it definitely is on some level. Um, you have to respect uh, the way people feel like they may not be ready to tell a specific person, not because they don't trust them, but because they are them themselves are ready. For me, I think that this is offensive on many different levels. For one, saying I had no idea that you were trans implies that like being trans is you know something that other people can see and like, oh wow, you're trans, like so amazing like, it's like people are saying that it's something noticeable and different about you and really it's just you know another identity and but then saying like why didn't you tell me it's like it's none of your business what my private parts are going back to the previous questions um if i choose to tell you then that's because you know i trust you or i want to tell you for whatever reason but the fact that someone's telling you you shouldn't answer that with, why didn't you tell me before? Because really, it's none of your business, and if I want to tell you, then I tell you, and if I don't want to tell you, then I won't tell you. It's up to me. Yeah, and just to add that, like, I hate when people, like, this kind of, like, uh, relates to the question, when people say, oh my god, I didn't know you were trans, you're so pretty. Like, people have actually said that to me, yeah, and, and um, I just find it, yeah, and like, oh, you're trans? Like, why didn't you tell me? It's kind of like, say, like, trans people don't look a certain way. They don't act a certain way. And, you know, and when people ask that question, it's almost like being insensitive of the fact that, like, just because I'm trans, I'm not any different from anybody else. Like, yes, my identity is different. And yes, I am, like, transgender. And, like, yes, I, I am different from you. But we are also the same in many ways. And when people say that, it's almost like they're just, they just, like, when they, when they act like they can't believe it, it's like, well, what does a trans person look like? 
Like, a trans person can be anyone. So. The thing about, like, wait, you're trans, you're so pretty. It's like, are you saying that trans people can't be pretty? Like, that trans people can't pass? There should be no... Why do you have stereotypes? It's like the stereotype. When people say, wait, you're gay, I never would have guessed. It's like people are acting on the stereotype that gay people should act a certain way or do certain things. There's a different way to be... Different ways to be, you know, trans or straight or cisgender. There's different ways to have every identity. Like, no two people are alike. You shouldn't be basing this on stereotypes of what someone should or shouldn't look like or should or shouldn't do. Yeah, and for the second question, you know, why didn't you tell me? I feel like coming out is different for every single person, and there's not one way to come out. In some cases, coming out can be a really hard and stressful thing for someone. So I feel like it's kind of like a backhanded statement or a backhanded compliment after someone comes out to you to say, oh, why didn't you tell me sooner? Like, why did you wait so long? Or Because it's like, you know, well, they're telling you now, so why can't you just be grateful for them sharing something, a part of their life that they didn't have to share with you? And the thing that's also bad about that question, yeah, like, just to add to that, is, like, it almost, like, sounds like they're offensive. Like, oh, why didn't you tell me sooner? And then it almost makes me feel responsible for their feelings. And it makes me almost feel, like, upset, like, I hurt them. But the truth is that we don't feel responsible for other people's emotions, and we shouldn't. And this question definitely, like, violates, like, that boundary. Okay. Yeah, go ahead, Sean. Adding on to the why didn't you tell me sooner, when that when somebody asks that of you, why didn't you tell me sooner, you can say to them, like, this is a private private information about me. If you had told me something about you, like private information about your life, and I responded with why didn't you tell me sooner, how would you feel? Like, that's something private and you chose to tell me or I chose to tell you. And, you know, it's none of your business and you should be glad that I'm, you know, telling you without questioning me about the timing of my telling you. It's my business and if I want to tell you, I will. If I don't, I won't. That's great. Yeah. Okay. Do any of you have any questions that you want to talk about? Okay. (laughs) Um, I think we we covered a lot here. So again, this isn't meant to be a a, a catch-all of uh, questions and and prescribed answers. This is um, obviously you all having a conversation about your experiences with these things, why you find them to be personally offensive or why you don't. Um, But I'd love to open up uh, the floor and have you all have an opportunity just to kind of discuss your own lives and how do you navigate your own you know, everyday life in terms of when do you disclose things? Do you feel the need to? Like, what does privacy and confidentiality look like to you? Um, yeah, I just, it's it's fairly open-ended, but I want to have an opportunity for you all to kind of talk about um, your own lived experiences. Um, well, uh, you can go. No, you go ahead. Okay. Um, well, my personal experience Um, has been yeah I've had a lot of trouble in the past kind of like judging and like weighing um when to like come out to somebody or if I even should or um like I don't understand to some aspect like why I should come out I mean it's a personal thing for me um and I also want to like go forward in my life as like a transgender like spokesperson and activist but I it also just like it's hard to get the timing right. Like, I can't just walk up to somebody and, like, shake their hand and say, hi, I'm Ariel and I'm transgender, you know? So um, I've had, like, a lot of, like, experiences in the past where it's been hard for me to kind of, like, gauge, like, the, the like, the social dynamic and um, between me and another person and, like, when's, like, the perfect opportunity to come out. And I actually had an experience at my new school um, that was that kind of relates to coming out um and i um and uncomfortable questions and um so i came to my new school and i socially transitioned there um and i came to the school as ariel so nobody knew that i um used to um that i used to be ian that was my birthday i'm just 
disclosing that. So nobody knew that I used to live life as a boy and they didn't know that I was transgender. So I came to the school and um, gym, like in the locker room, I would change in the bathroom because um, I just did, didn't, I just didn't feel like comfortable, like changing in front of the other girls because that, because they didn't know that I was trans. And um, one day um, I started to feel like more comfortable, like with some of like the other girls and like, I started to really like make friends at my new school. And so um, I started like changing with them, but I would face towards the wall so they wouldn't like know. And then um, one day my mom got me like this pair of leggings to wear to gym and the leggings were really tight and then um the girls like obviously noticed something and they started asking me questions like oh like wh why why does it like fit like that um and they were just asking me like really nosy like uncomfortable questions and i kind of just flipped out and i kind of lost it and because people were just like barraging me with all of these like questions and I just was feeling violated on so many levels and it was so overwhelming. Um, that was my experience. But also I know that like they, they've been my friends for so long and they're like a hundred percent supportive of me. Um, and I know that they were just like concerned, but um, also it was middle school and girls can be like a little nosy and they like want to know everyone's business in middle school. And so obviously they were a little curious and so I like, I couldn't go to gym because I was just so emotional. So I went to the guidance counselor and um, I had to go home because I was just so overwhelmed and I just didn't know what to do. I didn't know how to like respond to them and I didn't know how to act in that situation. Um, and later on, like all the girls, like from that situation, found out that I was trans and um, eventually just, like everyone knew about me being trans in my school and everyone is so supportive of me. And I go to like a really like open and like really like liberal like school. And it's such a supportive environment for me. And I'm so lucky. Um, but that was just one like key experience in my life so far that really like has resounded with me um, about like uncomfortable situations and uncomfortable questions and I guess I can't be the best person to answer that question because I didn't act so cool under that kind of pressure um, but yeah it's, I think that like my story can kind of stand as an example for trans youth that like you don't have to answer these questions like if somebody asks you a, an uncomfortable question, like you can just walk in the other direction and they can figure it out. Um, because I know how it feels. I know like that feeling of like being on the spot and you feel like everybody's looking at you. Um, but yeah, my advice is just to really just like be yourself and just speak your mind and say, that's not okay. And I hope that this video and my story can help you in some way um, kind of navigate that. So that's my little tidbit. <laughs> Thank you. One second. I had a very similar experience to Ariel. Um, I switched schools when I transitioned. So no one at my new school knew that I was trans. They just knew me as Sean, as a boy. Um, after... I don't know how long it was, a few months, I decided to tell one of my friends that I made at my new school that I was trans. And she asked me some of the questions that were mentioned here, like, um, why didn't you tell me before? And I really wish I had stood up to her and said, hey, this is my private business, you know. She was glad I'm telling you now, you shouldn't be asking why I didn't tell you before, I just met you. And she also asked me about my birth name, and I feel bad that I didn't stand up to her because I really don't think she should have asked that. But I hope that this video will could change that experience for other kids that they won't have to deal with being asked these same kind of questions. And as of the recording of this video, the other kids in my school do not know that I'm trans, although that may change over time. Um, you know, things happen. Like what happened to Ariel, other kids might find out. Um, but I just want to say that really the thing is, um, the, 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 like the questions that were discussed in these videos, you should not feel like you should have you have to answer them. 
And if someone does ask you one of these questions, you know, mention the things that we brought up earlier. It's not okay to ask these private questions. It's your information. It's who you are. Thank you. Thank you, Sean. Um, well, for me, I think I live my life and, like, my gender being, like, pretty stealth. Like, I'm out, and I'm out to, like, my family, and I'm out to, like, people at school and, you know, people I've worked with. I've been out with them, but I feel like a lot of people, after I've come out to them, have just, you know, been supportive when as soon as I told them and then after that like kind of swept it under the rug but there have been some people you know like my mom and my grandma and like my friends at school have really like stuck with me and have been super supportive and always use the right pronouns and always like correct people and I just remember just having being like so being filled with so much like anxiety when I was coming out and like questioning my gender and questioning my sexuality like a few years ago and like not knowing like what was going on and then just being surrounded by you know friends who I knew that loved me and I knew that would support me like no matter what like that has really you know helped me and for me I'm kind of one of those people who feel like when I get asked questions like that I just kind of I either most of the time I really don't answer it because I feel like a lot of these questions are really like intrusive and it's really none of their business you know a lot of the things you know I'll tell people what my pronouns are and I'll tell people you know what non-binary is but I really don't tell them a whole lot after that I choose to be very you know keep to myself about things like that because that's what makes me happy and I don't ever feel like like, basically, the message is don't feel obligated, like how everyone was saying, like, don't feel obligated. But if you want to tell everyone, definitely you feel like you can and definitely have the courage to do so and just, like, live your life, you know, however you want to, whatever way that is. I would like to say, sorry. No, go ahead, Emily. I was just thinking, Zana. Go ahead. I would like to say that I have personally developed a lot over these past few years um, with me being confused about myself, my gender identity, and whatnot. And I feel the need to say that just because you feel offended by these questions, you definitely should be respectful towards that person asking the question as they most likely mean no harm and aren't trying to be malicious in any way. Uh, in my experience, um, I go to a new school and all the staff knew, I go by Emily and actually the sex on my uh, ID is F, so that's cool. Um, this guy on the first day of school, uh, we were introducing ourselves. I said my name was Emily. And the guy next to me responded with, that's very manly of you to accept your name like that. I did, at first I thought it was to be malicious and I took a step back from the room and uh, later that day I talked to my parents about it and they, they flipped my perspective and I think I definitely know now that he wasn't trying to be malicious malicious in any way and that he was just trying to understand how I was trying to how I was feeling and trying to be supportive of me. I later then uh confronted him about it, saying how I was transgender and I'm Emily, I'm female, I present as female. And yeah, uh another thing I wanted to bring up is People say that it may be just a phase, and this bothers me, but not as much nowadays. Uh, sure, it could be a phase, but you shouldn't assume it is. And I think it can come off really rude when you describe it as being a phase. Uh, especially in this day and age, a lot of people take offense to many different things. Um, you just never know. 
Yeah, I think, you know, I, I agree with you, Emily. And I think also um, the flip side of that, too, is that according to the American Pediatric Association, you know, developmentally, people know essentially their gender by the age of four. Right. So, there, yes, like people can can um, kind of explore what their gender identity is. They can also explore what their gender expression is, as we've kind of talked about in this conversation or what you all have talked about is that. There's there's seven billion people in the world and there's only two gender categories like that doesn't that doesn't work. Right. Like there's so many people just as there's so many different gender identities and expressions. So um, I wanted to personally thank you all so much for for opening up to us, um, especially given that this is part of our trans awareness week uh, with gender spectrum. Um, you know, there's um, a lot of work that that we all are doing and you know, this, this community is really passionate about, um, about you all. I'm really passionate about the work that you're doing. Obviously you're really passionate about it too. You're in the gender spectrum youth council, which isn't an easy thing to get into. So, you know, give yourself a pat on the back for that. Um, yeah, just thank you so much for, for the, the words that you've put out and really kind of opening up your own experiences and, and what's worked for you in your life and, and what hasn't and knowing that there's still so much more to learn and, just seeing where you all are maturity wise and, and the ability to articulate yourselves and have this con these types of conversations is really inspiring. And I hope that people, you know, whether they're, they're, you know, folks at any point in their life who are experiencing, you know, an, an idea of maybe they need to explore their gender identity or expression, or they're an ally or they're a sibling or a relative, you know, a mom or a dad or whatever it may be. I hope people can see this video and really take something away from it and, and know that it's it's all about positionality. It's all about how you present yourself in terms of wanting to get to know someone and wanting to um, understand what, what someone's life is like. You know, I mean, again, there's, there's so many of us and there's so many different ways to experience life. So um, thank you. Any, any final thoughts from any of you or, or is that it? <laughs> Oh, I just want to say for all my trans people out there and all of my non-binary and gender expansive and like whoever you are, you know, like you're valid, you matter, you're important, okay? Like, take care of yourselves. Yeah, and um, for me, I just want to tell um, everyone out there in the trans community that gender spectrum values you the trans community values you you're beautiful you're valid and um you are so individual in every way possible and you shouldn't let any question get you down and i know that sometimes these uncomfortable situations and these questions will um but just um I think you should always know that there will always be a support system for you, even if it isn't at home, even if it isn't at school, there will always be a community out there for you. And um, I love Gender Spectrum. I love the Gender Spectrum Youth Council. And I love um, everything that Gender Spectrum is doing for you and for this community. So just know that you have a voice and that you're not alone. I want to say to anyone who is watching this video and is not transgender, if you are working on being an ally to trans people, just think about this video and think about respecting the trans person's privacy. We're just like everyone else. We have our, you know, privacy. And there's no excuse for, you know, saying hateful things or, you know, like using grammar as an excuse not to use they as a pronoun. Just respect the person and their pronouns and their identity. I would like to say that each and every one of you are amazing and I truly value every single one of you. And it's truly amazing whether or not you're an ally or another trans person. You came here for either to research and using your effort to support another person or you're trying to support yourself and I think that's truly an amazing thing and you should give yourself a pat on the back for that. All right. 
Well, thank you so much again um, to all of you. I, I really appreciate it. And I'm really looking forward to um, seeing um, the responses that people have and, and really, you know, carrying on the conversation, whether it be um, on online, on the Gender Spectrum Facebook page, uh, but especially on the Gender Spectrum Lounge, um, really having this conversation in, in more depth and really helping to foster uh, a communal and universal understanding of, of just what it means to be a person and how to be loving and compassionate towards everyone. Um, so again, thank you so much. Um, and to the viewers at home, thank you for watching. Um, as you can tell, we all hope that you've learned and gained something out of this program. Um, please share as you see fit and necessary. Um, we all have someone who I'm sure can greatly benefit from watching a program like this. So thank you. Take care. <laughs>